Today on part two of our lesson, Solving One-Step Equations, we're going to explore what you do when you're dealing with multiplication and division in an equation. To start off with, however, let's just review four quick questions that are the kind of questions we saw on our last assignment. For example, you have negative 5 plus x equals negative 3, w minus 7 equals 10, so we need to just go through each problem and figure out what inverse operation we need to perform in order to isolate the variable by itself. So those inverse operations would look like this. Add 5 to both sides on number 1. Add 7 to both sides on number 2. Add 4 to both sides on number 3. And subtract 13 from both sides on number 4. And when we do this, the portion where we have negative 5 plus 5 or negative 7 plus 7, those are eliminated, leaving us with just x equals uh, whatever the final calculation is on, or whatever the particular problem has for a variable. So let's look at that first one. So negative 3 plus 5 is 2. So the number 1 would be x equals 2. On number 2, we have 10 plus 7, which is just 17. So in that case, we'd have w equals 17. On number 3, 11 plus 4 is 15. So in that case, we would have b equals 15. And it's okay if the variable is on the right side like that. On uh, this last one, uh, 22 minus 13 is going to be 9. So b equals 9 in that case. All right, so it's pretty easy so far. Okay, let's move on to what we're going to talk about today. There's a nice little video here that you can click on if you're at home, not feeling so hot, to help you out with this, but we'll, we'll get right into the lesson. So there's two properties that we're going to need in order to solve these type of equations. The first one is the multiplication property, which basically states, if I have an equation, something equals something else, like 2 plus 4 equals 7, or whatever the case may be, I can multiply both sides of that equation by the same number, and it will still be a true and equivalent equation. Uh, by the same token, if I have an equation A equals B, something like that, I can divide both sides of that equation by some number, and I, it will still be an equivalent equation. So let's see what do we mean by this. So here's, a, here's an equation, 3y equals 21. Now remember, to, our goal is to get y by itself. And in order to get y by itself in this particular problem, it would be helpful to divide both sides by 3 because 3 divided by 3 is 1, and that's what we want to know is what does one of those y's equal? So 21 divided by 3 is 7. All right, hey, that's looking pretty easy. The next one, we've got negative 16 equals negative 4w. So we've got the variable on the right side, so that's the number we're going to look at to figure out what to do. So we're multiplying by negative 4. In order to solve this one, we're going to divide by negative 4. And we've got to keep in mind our, our understanding of integers. A negative divided by a negative is positive, And 16 divided by 4 is 4. So in this particular case, w is 4. On our third example, we have negative 50 equals u divided by negative 9. Sometimes that negative could be in front of the 9. Sometimes it's in front of the fraction bar. Sometimes people even put it on the u. In order to simplify it and make it more, more easy to accomplish, Think of the negative sign as being on the negative 9. So we're going to have to multiply both sides by negative 9 to undo dividing both sides by negative 9. So we'll multiply by negative 9. Then, like we've seen on the last few problems, those cancel each other out, leaving us with u equals 9 times 50. Well, 9 times 0 is 0. 9 times 5 is 45, and this, both of those 
numbers on the left are negative. Negative times a negative is a positive. So there's that, that particular problem. Okay, here's another one where we're dividing both sides by 8. To undo dividing by 8, we multiply by 8. All right, so those 8s cancel each other out on the left side. And that will just leave us with v equals whatever we get on the right side. Negative 5 times 8 is negative 40. All right, keep moving. There's uh, four more problems to do real quick. Let's just quickly set up what you would do for, for, to begin. I think we'd multiply both sides by 4. In this, uh, this particular problem, we'd divide both sides by 0, 9. 0 0.09. Okay. On the, this pro, uh, the next problem, we divide both sides by 6. So I, I need you to understand these are pretty straightforward. You just got to look for the variable and seeing what's being one, see what's being done to the variable by a number underneath it or next to it, and then just do the opposite in order to eliminate that. So the fours cancel each other out. We're left with y equals negative 7 times 4. And that's just negative 28. Remember your times tables? All right. These cancel each other out, leaving us with 1w equals 1.8 divided by 0 0.09. Oh, could you use a calculator to check that? Sure you could. Let's just try that. 1.8 divided by 0 0.09. Ooh, that one was kind of tricky. They're, they're maybe thinking that we might think this is 2 or something like that, but because this is 0 0.09, it actually equals 20. So you've got to kind of be watching for that kind of thing. 6 divided by 6 is 1, so we just have 1x equals negative 24 divided by 6. Negative divided by a positive is negative. 24 divided by 6 is 4. And then on this last one, we're going to have 20.48 times 8. Let's grab that calculator again. Pull it over out of the way. 20.48 times 8. So that would be 163, 163.84. And we're not going to do any additional rounding on this one. If we want you to do some additional rounding on certain problems, we'll let you know. All right, so there we go. Alex assignment, one-step equations, part two, dealing with multiplication and division properties. Thank you very much.